Listen, my girl, I've got a drawing. I got it from the police. It's a drawing you had with you. It shows a murder scene. The girl that was killed looks like the girl that was probably in the cell with you. I'd like to know what happened between you two. Please, try and remember. You were with the girl in the prison cell. What happened before that? Come on, I know you can do it. Just this one session. Describe to me where you are. It's the watchtower. How did you get there? I don't know. Ah, it still works. Let's see if this motor will work now. Zip. Maybe the panel electrics are down. Okay. Let's see what this thing looks like on the inside. Yep, it's gotten pretty wet. Now then, what now? I must have to connect it somewhere. But where? There we go. I must have to connect it somewhere. But where? Okay, the searchlight is out again. That must be enough. It's got to work now. What is it? What's going on? The searchlight. It's shot out. Oh no. I hate her. The girl came, right? The girl who you were with later in the cell. I'm tired. I know. It's late. Sleep a while. I'll be back again tomorrow. We'll pick up again from there. Don't worry. Now I know where we can start out from again tomorrow. Good night.
Dr. Young, what are you doing out here? Why should that interest you? I thought you'd already gone home. And you? Not leaving? Yeah. Have you discovered anything? Quite possible. I'm confident I'm going to find out what happened to these young people. Ah, really? That's, uh, excellent. Tell me. Please, you'll have to excuse me. I'm really tired. I just want to get back to my hotel. Okay, then. Mr. Flynn? Sir? Good evening, sir. I have some mail for you. A letter. Thank you. I've got to go. See you later. Have a good day, sir. Dear Mr. McNamara, in accordance with the authority mandate enclosed, we inform you that we are now entrusted with managing the interests of Mrs. Kim McNamara of Washington, D.C. Mrs. McNamara is the registered owner of the house at 37 Hillside, Washington, D.C., which you register as your primary dwelling and which you also inhabit in common with our client. Effective immediately, our client has issued a restraining order prohibiting you from entering either the house or the property at 37 Hillside, Washington, D.C. Non-compliance with this order will be met with measures invoking the full force of the law. Your personal effects will be put into storage or mailed to you accordingly. We will be contacting you again shortly in order to keep you fully appraised of this matter. Yours sincerely, Frank Pollock. Ingram and Pollock. This is the messaging service for Kim McNamara. I'm not available right now. Please leave a message. Kim, it's uh, Dave. It's your husband. Or should I say ex-husband? I read your letter. You're not serious, are you? Didn't we agree we'd talk this over? There's one thing I can promise you. If you're really going to go through with this, then we're both going to end up with some serious grief. I will not... Message storage limit. Thank you for calling. Damn it! I must speak to Terry. Ingram? Hi, Terry. Yeah, it's me. David. Hi. Terry, uh, I need your help. I got something in the mail. Uh-huh. From Kim. It's a legal letter. From your office, Terry. Oh. She wants a divorce. Did you know about that, Terry? Still there? She, um, must have discussed that with Frank. I just don't believe it, Terry. I mean, I've tried everything. Yeah, I know it hasn't been easy for her, but hell, it hasn't exactly been easy for me either. But you can't just pick up and throw it all away like that. Not like this. I'm really sorry, David. Hey, can't you have a word with Frank? You know, call him off somehow? I'll see what I can do. But I don't think you should hold out too much hope. Oh, for crying out loud, what am I, some kind of monster? Please, Terry, speak to her. David. Yeah? You need help. Treatment. I'm telling you this as a friend. Oh, great. Now you're starting. You know it yourself, David. You know you do. God, yes, I know. I'll do it. I'll do it. But what good's that right now? So you'll, you'll speak to Kim then? You promise? Yeah, I will. Thanks. Uh, 
Uh, I've got to go. It's uh, been a long day. And you haven't exactly been talkative. Sorry. It's a difficult situation for me, too, you know. Sure. Sorry to lay this stuff on you. We'll talk again when you're in Washington. When we have some quiet time. Hey, uh, you, st you still owe me a beer. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten. Keep on, yeah? Yeah. Take care. It's not true. Uh, uh, mommy's boy. You think you're just tired of life, pal? Hi, Randall. Evening. Scotch? Double. On the way. So, had a bit of trouble? Yeah, you could say that. Trouble with your wife, huh? Can you tell just looking at me? You're a clever son of a bitch, Randall. You kind of develop a nose for it, working behind the counter here. And? You gonna fix things? You mean with my wife? I have no idea. I guess it's out of my hands. No, I'll have another place. Another? Take it slow, man. Has she got another guy? No. At least not as far as I know. Midlife crisis? We just fight. Simple as that. So? Whose fault? Fault? Oh, yeah, I fought. Uh, mine, I guess. So what did you do? It's a long story. No, go on, shoot. You got a wife, then? No wonder she's not interested in a wuss like you. Hey, Riker, just cut it out, yeah? The man, he's got problems. Sure, he's got them. The sort of problems you can only fix with a certain type of operation. <laughs> Your wife ought to give me a call, Weedy. Then she'd find out what a real man's like. Give me your number, and you can go pack your bags. Riker, that's enough now. That's okay, Randall. Okay, Randall. It's all right. For Wimpy here, everything's all right. Let's make a bet. His wife's at home with some other guy right now. But hey, for him, that's A-OK. -okay. Right, Randall? Okay, Doc. Out with it. What do you want to hear? A story about my wife? If you like. I met Kim in 1995 while I was studying in Washington. She was an art major and I was doing medicine. She was a great painter. And had big plans. A painter, huh? So what did she paint? She was a beautiful wild thing. But she wasn't crazy. She was, uh, strong, you know? She had this amazing energy. I wouldn't know much about that. And now she doesn't paint anymore? What makes you say that? You said she was a great painter. I said that, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't paint anymore. Why not? She had an accident. Oh, and the accident? She's almost blind. She has about 15% of her vision. How'd that happen? Like I said, it was an accident. It was just a darn unlucky sort of thing. We had an argument, and uh, we were having a barbecue party at home, and I... Like I said, it was just a real bad luck thing. You don't want to talk about it, right? Yeah, it's enough that I still dream about it every night. And you couldn't help her? Is that it? Randall, listen. I just want a drink, okay? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Let's talk about something else. Your job, then. What's happening with your job? People think all sorts of things when I tell them I'm a psychiatrist. A lot of people think I can see right inside their head. And read their dirty minds. Exactly. But you know what? It's just a normal job. Some folks fix cars. Or uh, ruin livers. <laughs> you fix minds. Oh, whatever. Well, I try. Not really fix their mind. It's more like clearing out the crap. Freeing up ways to get beneath it all. Jeez. I'm not sure I'd want anyone poking around my darkest thoughts. Just me is fine enough. 
Doesn't sound like you have too much fun somehow. That isn't necessarily the one deciding factor in life. Uh-huh. What is that? Sounds like you know. Take a thing seriously. Do your best. Help others. Sorry, Doc. That sounds more like the army. That's the sort of crap our captain used to come out with all the time. All of the Boy Scout families. Did a good job to help people, to defend freedom. And then what do we do? We bombed little children. That's what. Yeah. Sometimes you want to help, but then you actually harm yourself. They sure know about that in the army. That's why they have people like me. People to tidy up the crap. Yeah, I served in the army. Seven years. What outfit? Psychological operations. I was responsible for looking after test subjects. What the hell is that? Combat simulations. Computer-aided combat training. Okay. Not real combat, then. However you want to take it. We were responsible for the war before the war and the war after the war. The war is in soldiers' heads. But you're not doing that anymore. No. Pay's too bad? No. Uh, your wife had something against it? No, the job just wasn't really for me. Like I told you, sometimes you go to help others and you end up hurting yourselves. You had trouble with the patients, right? No. The job just wasn't good for me. I took too much of it back home. So what exactly did you do? I dealt with uh, traumatized soldiers. Combat paranoia. Nightmares. Psychological disturbance following combat exposure. It's not good for anyone to see bodies torn to pieces, and certainly not good if it was you who was responsible for it happening. Uh, so it didn't do you a whole lot of good hearing about that. Is that it? No, not very. And you're still having problems with it, huh? Let's just leave it at that, shall we? It, it was a long time ago, and I'm tired of talking about it. You know what, pal? You're seriously getting on my nerves. What was that, punk? Like I said, you're getting on my nerves. Drink your drink and shut your mouth, got it? Hey, Wimp. Don't you think you're using the wrong tone here? You don't talk to grown-ups like that. Didn't your mom teach you any manners? Riker, put that thing away. Keep out of this, Randall. Yeah? And now what? And now you're getting all uptight, yeah? I feel really sorry for your wife. Okay, my friend. And now? Who's up tight now? Hey! Uh, uh, listen, man. Stay cool, yeah? This thing could just go off. Try it. Don't be stupid, man. I can't promise. Stop it, man. Are you crazy or what? There are some who would say that. Randall! Holy shit! This guy's flipping out! It's okay. It's okay, Randall. I'm sorry. I... I didn't want to do that. Not my day today. Kinda looks that way. I think I'd better go now. I'm tired. Good night. My god. I better watch myself. What a nightmare. I'm just wrecking stuff. I'd better get to bed fast. Record date, Monday, November the 12th, 2007. Uh, progress with examinations as follows. All patients were accessible. Drugs still withdrawn. The patient in cell number five had to be restrained. This measure was approved by the authorities. Recursive reconstructions have been successful, partly due to implementation of ambient changes and external stimuli. These sessions were recorded. Evaluation of the content is still difficult. Information relating to identities has not been forthcoming. The correlation between the recollections is noteworthy. It's becoming more and more clear that the five patients are associated with each other and that they have spent time at the same place. It's evident that several patients have been involved in violent conflict. A military property has been hinted at as a possible location with uh, tight security and close to water. Further action? Continuing with reconstruction with help of previous recordings. Journal recording end. <sighs> Confidential note. Kim has appointed a lawyer. Frank. <sighs> In the corner of the bar today, there was a crazy guy who uh, provoked me. If he only knew where my head's at, he would have kept his mouth shut. 
I controlled myself. However, I was close to losing it. I almost did. Maybe Kim's right. I have nightmares every night. I don't know how long I can hold on. I just don't know. If only I can sleep tonight. 